All I gotta do now is turn on the switch, listen, smell, make sure nothing is burning. Hey guys, welcome back. We got a bird. Hey, let will try this again. Welcome back. This episode is going to be a tough one for us. Um, wiring is something that I like to do, something that you're a little bit intimidated by. Um, so the only way to really get over being afraid of something is to do it over and over again. So today we're going to be doing this. We're going to be completely rewiring the car with the Painless Performance Wiring Kit, part number 10403. This is their 25 circuit bulkhead unit, which as closely emulates what already came in the car anyway. Um, don't be intimidated before you begin reading the instructions and you've got 180 pages of it right here. Don't be intimidated by that either because not every page applies. It's just so detailed that some pages apply to you, some pages apply to other cars. And so it's just that thorough. So you're probably only gonna end up using about half of that anyway, but um, if you're making mistakes, it's on you because they clearly lay it all out with colored pictures and everything. So for people like me. So before we begin, uh, we've got the car pulled in here in the third bay, which is a little bit tighter. Really was hoping to have some room to open both doors because we're gonna be inside quite a bit. If I were honest, I would tell you we have a game plan, but we really don't. Uh, we just know that um, we've got to take the interior out, disconnect the battery, and um, take the dash apart, and just, just kind of go from there. The one thing we do know uh, is this open bay here that I cleaned up. We're going to lay out some moving blankets and stuff on the floor, uh, and just take this entire harness and stretch it out so we can kind of get a visual. Because sometimes, just looking at it kind of makes sense. So I think that's how we're going to start. That's our only game plan at this point. Again... The manual's right there. Painless makes it easy. In full disclosure, uh, I have not had a chance to read the entire thing yet, uh, but we will be referencing it quite a bit during the install. So uh, if it's as painless as they say it is, we should be fine, right? Okay, in case you're wondering, this box is not just a bunch of wires. It comes with everything. Battery cable, ground cables, zip ties, terminal ends, grommets, electrical tape, heat shrink, um, all the terminals, everything for the alternator, uh, more box of goodies here. I mean, just butt connectors, everything that em uh, emulates what the factory was, even the fuses, it comes with extra fuses. Um, even templates for drilling holes, uh, new ground straps. So yeah, it's awesome, actually. I can't wait to go through this stuff. Yeah, even your side marker lights. Like I could have used the factory ones, but nah, they got them right there. Get rid of all that 45 year old wiring. Okay, we got it initially laid out. There's the bulkhead. This is the underhood part. Lots of wires, starter wires, uh, some ignition. Um, here's the under dash part. Uh, a lot of steering column stuff, ignition right there. Switched cranking power. Um, all that is obviously all the lights and stuff go to the back, fuel pump. Um, and more steering column ignition stuff right there. So honestly, when you look at it, there's not much to it. Uh, there's a lot of cutting and splicing and terminals, but as long as you know where they go, you can kind of just get in the zone. And for me, that's kind of my zen is when I'm cleaning up wiring because I can't stand messy cabling. And this just kind of helps make more sense. Well, a little progress. Seats are out. Some of the plastic is out. Uh, some of the stuff in the back is out. I'm, I'm trying not to take everything out of the car because I really, well, for one, we don't have a lot of time. And that's less I got to put back. But for another, if there's a wire not running there, then I don't really care about it. So I'm not even going to take the carpet out, to be honest, because all the wiring either runs, well, runs along the edge of the uh, threshold here. There's a couple things to go underneath into the console, so it's still much easier to work out, work down here without the seats because I'm laying under the dash. I'm about to get the dash out, but we were in a hurry, like always, when we put this together. And I didn't create a disconnect switch for all these gauges, and so those wires are permanently wired all the way down in there. So I'm going to have to 
label them all, take them off the back of the gauges, and then pull the wiring through and salvage them somehow. Well, end of the night. This is where I'm gonna leave it tonight. Those gauges are still attached. I didn't feel like cutting those wires until I can trace them all down and pull them out and label them. And then tomorrow, all that wiring comes out and the steering column. And then I guess we'll start working out on this, pulling all the engine stuff off because that's got to get uh, swapped out as well. And then headlights and taillights. Good night, everybody. Well, it's the next day and I'm off work now and back out here in the garage. Things have escalated a little bit. Had to take out more of the interior. I was really trying to take out as little as possible, but those wires right there ran up along the top of the wheel well. So that meant the side panel had to come out to get the side panel out. The seats had to come out to get the seats out. You had to get the roll bar completely out. And here we are. Now, this rear harness is about ready to come out, except for the fact that it goes in the floor, into the top of the tank. And wouldn't you know, Monza's have an 18 and a half gallon fuel tank and Nathaniel filled it up before he parked it. So I don't have the right hose. I'm going to try to find some, but I'm going to have to siphon this gas out because I can't lower a gas tank by myself when it's got 20 gallons of fuel in it. So yeah, that's what's going on. Well, I had high hopes. I found that I did have a siphoning tool. Felt really great. Went to use it. Remembered that it won't fit through that. So took this off. Thought I could put it in through the side here. And now there's a vent right there that blocks off half the width. And uh, this thing is too big to fit through that. So I'm back to dropping this tank with 18 and a half gallons of fuel. I'll still siphon it out once it's down because <laughs> I don't want to put it back up that way. But dang it. progress <laughs> that all has to go through that hole right there I'm gonna try to do it without having to take off my windshield motor windshield wiper motor I'm just lazy I don't feel like getting in there and trying to disconnect it because it's kind of hard to do with with the hood up here so yeah, I'm gonna try to push that through. For those that are wondering why this has to go that way, it's pretty simple. It's because these big things won't fit through that hole. So it's gotta come the opposite direction. Quick update, Nathaniel's right. home from work. But that means I can get some help maybe trying to get uh, this wire through the firewall. Let me show you what's going on. You uh, showed up at the perfect time. Did I? Yeah. 
So I'm trying to shove this PSI conversion harness back through the hole and I'm at a fork right there where it gets wider. So I'm gonna hold it. Yeah, I just need you, I'll, I'll put you on the inside. Okay. Uh, Cause I can reach around here a little better. Okay. And uh, pull on that yeah, you kind of tug and I'll push. And I think between the two of us, we can figure it out. Okay. Hopefully. All right, we got it. That took a little bit of work, didn't it, bud? Yeah. All right, that's it, guys. See you in the morning. All right, off camera, this was a fiasco, but this is the entire headlight turn signal wiring harness that came out from underneath the nose here. Bulkhead is out, all the wiring forward of the bulkhead, old factory anyway, is out. Now we're headed back to get the tank uninstalled. That's the last little bit of wiring that's still technically attached to the car. And once the tank is dropped, we can undo the pump and then pull out all the wiring and that's it. We're officially done with the wiring. All the way down. That's it. Yeah, pull it out. Wow, that just cleared. Everything completely loose. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's pull it up to the center here. Right. That's it. We should be able to pull that whole thing out. Okay. We'll let you do the honors. Oh my gosh. Yeah, there it is. Hey, welcome back. There's been several days since I last filmed working with this painless kit. It's because we decided to do the, we were doing several things at once. Um, we're trying to fix a suspension that's broken in the rear or a coilover mounts. At the same time we were doing that, we decided to go ahead and install the Holley Terminator X Max kit and start the engine on that to make sure that there's no problems with that first. I figured if I got to eat an elephant, I'm gonna do it one bite at a time. And I was just gonna feel better if I could actually start the motor using only the hollow terminator kit, knowing that, you know, any wiring issues I may have had, I can point directly to Holly's kit itself and not blame something else, you know, that I did uh, simultaneously with the painless kit. So one step at a time. So here we are, we now have 10 days until we leave for power tour and I'm just now beginning the install of this kit. We went over what was in the kit. Oh gosh, what, two weeks ago I think now is when we filmed that. We never actually got a chance to get it in the car. It took a while to get all the old stuff out too on top of all the other things I mentioned. So uh, forgive me if I don't talk a whole lot, you're probably gonna get a lot of time lapses. <laughs> uh, and that way you don't hear me cussing either because it's just gonna be that stressful. Um, yes, it's called Painless. We're gonna find out if it really is. So here we go. Well, I'm already learning that I'm gonna need a second set of hands to help me get this in here. Uh, this is not staying up in the hole. Uh, Nathaniel's not here right now. He'll be here in a couple days. I'm gonna have to ask my wife to come out here and help me out. So I'll be right back. All right, got it, finally, off camera, but I'll show you what it looks like. Got quite a mess here. The rest of it's all out here on the floor too. But there it is, bulkhead up there in the corner. Bolted up nice and tight. Dialectic grease um, put in between the terminals from this half of the bulkhead and the other half of the bulkhead, which is right here on the other side of the firewall. Right now, I just got it, got it snaked up, up underneath the fender and just all just hanging out right here. Hey, back at it again tonight, wiring up. Well, we're splitting duties. Nathaniel's reading the book right now. He's gonna wire up headlights and everything this side of the firewall. I'm currently inside the car wiring up everything inside. So far I've gotten the headlight dimmer switch. I actually hooked up the courtesy lights. <laughs> Not absolutely necessary, but we've never had a dome light or anything in this car, so it'd be kind of cool to have. It was easy enough to do. And then uh, I gotta get, let's see, I gotta go find a headlight switch off the old harness. I'll start wiring that up next, because there's actually a lot to this thing. Oh, there it is. Let me put the camera down and get this thing unplugged. What's your question? I mentioned these cutoff pieces. I'm not sure if I really need those. 
or is that just kind of an extra thing they put in? Well, it is if you got, so some cars have a turn function on the side marker lights and some don't, we don't. Okay. You're just gonna cut it to length and then splice it into that that you got right there. It's weird because it's a brown wire. wire going into, yeah, the so black. This is just a ground. Yep. Actually, no. In this case, that's your ground. Your black is your power. Why would we do that? <laughs> Welcome to Automotive Wiring 101. Okay. I want you to take a look at this. I know you're down on the floor, but take a look at this. Yep. Don't pull it completely tight because your wiring may need to tuck all the way up in here nice and tight. So leave yourself enough slack okay. to go up all the way up, tight up in that corner. So you yep. can kind of hide it up underneath the fender. So give yourself enough slack to do that before you pull it down here and cut it off underneath. Okay. All right. Okay. Always think about your routing. Okay. All right. So off camera, Nathaniel and I had a good discussion about how we're going to wire up the side marker lights and the turn signals and the parking lamps and get fancy and make it so that... And by fancy, we mean add a wire. Yeah, the well, add a wire so that the side marker lights Actually flash. will flash with the turn signals. Now, a factory Monza do never that. did that. No. But this is your car. You make it how you want. And he's decided he wants to do that. All right, I know this is upside down to you, but um, this is your headlight switch that came out of your car here. Uh -huh. um, you compare it to the early style and the later style um, schematic we got here. Yours is apparently the later style because there's an extra connector right here that you don't have that goes to the front parking lights. Mm -hmm. This blue wire right here uh, handles it all apparently. So they give you a brand new connector. Mm -hmm. You can see it. Actually, I got it upside down. <laughs> it plugs in like that. Yep. But you got to actually terminate okay. all the connections and put them in there. Yeah. So I've already uh, done all the factory terminals. I'm going to take all these and plug them in the right spot and then make our brand new headlight switch. Cool. Okay. Cool. All right. I just wanted to show you that. Where do they go? Right here. Oh, just inside? Yeah. Oh, okay. Is that it? Oh, I see. All right. So what you just saw there was Nathaniel referencing the blue car over there because uh, he didn't know exactly where he put the ground for the turn signal. I'm like, well, hey. We got another full complete car over there. <laughs> Go look at that. Yeah. So, is that all the extra? Yeah, that's all the extra wire. Nice. We're going to have a big pile of extra wire here. This is actually kind of fun. Once you get the hang of it, yeah. fun. So, Painless comes with a really cool ground, ground system yeah. here nice that ground. connects them all together. So it's got a nice big fat 10 gauge wire in the middle and that just, connects left to I right. Just, I just cut off the headlight ones because the relay kit we have already grounds it. Exactly. So I just need the turn signal ground. Yep. So, so this is a chassis ground that'll run up to like right here. Yeah, so it took all of those grounds. Of course, you cut a couple of them off and it puts them all into one nice big main 10 gauge chassis ground right there. Yep. And all you needed was the two turn signals because yep. the headlights are taken care of with a relay kit. Yep. So... Pretty easy. Yeah, it's not too bad, is it? Mm. All right. Headlight switch is done. Just got it mocked up over here on the side. Moving on to the wiper switch, which is these three wires right here. And I need to take these last three spades here and uh, crimp them onto this. And it should just go directly into the back of, here, where is it? My switch right here. All right, slight deviation on the wiper switch here. Uh, in the kit for these three wires, it just gives you uh, single blade connectors. And I kind of like this one a little better. This is the factory one. So I took it off my factory harness and depinned it because as you can see, it slides on there much better. It even has this little tab right there that catches, kind of helps hold it in. All right, it is about 1.45 in the morning and we're gonna call it, but man, we made really good progress. Like we pretty much wired this car, probably half of this car in just one evening. Yeah. Like 
fun's almost done. You got home around 10, 10 30, and it's 1 30 now, and we've made all of this progress pretty much tonight. Not too bad. Now, there's still steering column uh, controls inside the car for like heater and whatnot, rear tail lights, and then alternator and starter. We'll probably get that done tomorrow. Yeah. So, Got to get some sleep. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Hey, did you go swimming? Yeah, you did. You're all wet. Did you go swimming with her? Yeah. <laughs> Good morning. Back at it. Out here in the garage. Nathaniel's going to tackle the tail lights while I go inside. Wow, well, that's bright. And uh, work on the steering column and ignition. The two biggest things that I was most worried about and I didn't want to do that at two o'clock in the morning. Come back fresh this morning. Well, I say fresh, only about three hours of sleep, but come back fresh, look at it today, figure it out, get it right. Maybe try to get this thing running in the next day or two. So let's get busy. I guess the left side marker light would be this, right? Yes. That's the marker light. Because, yeah. Yeah, because they used to be down here, remember? Wait, there's what? There's a section for an amplifier. Well, Where's... of course you're going to have one someday. <laughs> That's funny. I didn't know that. I hadn't actually seen that. Mm -mm. It never gets old. Hey, quick update. Got all the ignition and um, steering column completely rewired with new stuff. That's pretty cool. Just did the, let's see, this is reverse switch. I'm getting ready to do the neutral safety switch next. Um, I don't remember what this is. <laughs> I haven't got that far in the instructions. Uh, but here's the purple wires, the neutral safety switch. Anyway, it looks like a mess, but most of what you see there is actually done and wired up. I just haven't cleaned it up. Uh, pretty soon I should be putting this column back up where it goes, and then I can kind of route some of that messy wiring up there where it needs to go. So, making progress. Now we're to the section where, I'll be honest, I was a little bit intimidated by it. These are the alternator and starter wires coming off the kit here. And if you look at the book, there are, I guess skip the page there. Yeah, that many pages just on the alternator section alone. Why are there so many pages? Because there are so many different styles of alternators. 10 SI, 12 SI, CS144, CS130, or the CS130D, which I have here. Anyway, uh, to make a long story short, um, I don't have that pigtail. I'm going to have to cut it off of my old harness. <laughs> I hate to do that, but I got to have it. I ain't got time to wait. And then uh, it's really cool. They give you uh, one of two ways to splice in a resistor as well. There's the resistor itself. Here's all the terminal ends. I'm gonna take that MIDI connection. It's just a fusible connection that goes on the firewall over there. I'm gonna use it, because uh, there are benefits to using it, obviously. So, uh, before I wire up my pigtail for my alternator, I'm gonna probably use method two here with the three splices where I take the uh, uh, red alternator wire uh, with the alternator regulator brown wire, splice those two together before the brown wire then goes into the resistor and then obviously goes into the back of the pigtail itself. As for the MIDI connection itself, that's explained up here on page 64. There's the back of my bulkhead. Uh, the thin wire goes to the alternator itself. The thicker wire goes to the MIDI connection. Then it gets daisy chained back to the alternator. And then the other one goes down to the starter itself. So that's what I'm going to do now. Wish me luck. Okay. I spared you a lot of the details. It took me a long time <laughs> to get the starter uh, hooked up underneath the edge. I now think I'm to the point where as soon as I hook up the battery, I'm ready to start this thing. So I'm gonna go uh, finally do some permanent connections around the battery. I had some temporary stuff there before. Uh, make those look good. Actually plug them into the battery. And I should be able to turn the key and turn this thing on unless I've done something wrong, which is entirely possible. <laughs> so let me get the battery hooked up. 
and let's try this thing. Okay, battery's hooked up. All I gotta do now is turn on the switch, listen, smell, make sure nothing's burning or there's any shorts, and then I think I'll try the key next. Here we go. Mm, don't smell anything. Walk up front here. Nothing up here. Don't smell anything up here. Take it all in. So far, so good. All right, here's my key down here. It's literally sitting on the floor. Everything's powered on. Oh gosh, here we go. That was a really slow crank and I heard a pop. Well, on this channel, we show you all our mistakes. What do you see wrong with this fuel pump here? Yeah, thank God it didn't crank up. Look at the fuel it spit out in just that few seconds. All right, well, unfortunately, uh, I have somewhere I have to be. I've run out of time. I'll come back to this. It's actually probably a pretty good thing that it didn't fire up, so that on it. All right, well, I'll come back to it later tonight. I'll see you when I get back. We're back. Nathaniel's with me as well. <laughs> Surprise, I'm filming. Um, all right, where I left you guys off was the car started really slowly. Thought I might have heard something pop. I'm not really sure about that. Maybe it was just a weird noise. Uh, a couple things I know I did wrong. Uh, one that I told you the last time was that I forgot to cook the fuel lines. Duh. Um, the other was that uh, the ground wire for the ECU itself, I forgot to uh, hook up. So I'm going to hook that up. I'm going to hook the fuel lines up. And then um, we'll try to start this thing again. The voltage, by the way, was, was fine on the battery. So I don't know why it was cranking so slowly. Hope that had something to do with the ground um, and not something other other problem that I've completely screwed up. So uh, we'll try it again here soon. All right, voltage is good. I want to see if it's actually switched cranking power. So yeah. the car may fire up, so be prepared. You ready? Yeah. Yep. Here we go. Okay, that's an issue. Oh. This should not be cranking that slow. And it's popping because well, who knows why? Because it doesn't have enough voltage. Okay. So why is it cranking so slow? Don't know. Um, Acts like it's a voltage issue. Although now I got to check voltage all the way up to the front. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Well, it ain't the progress we wanted, but it's still progress. Yep. All right. Let's uh let's just take the meter here and start checking all the way from the battery up to the front. Okay. Figure out where the brake is. All right. So we figured out that. This battery has been sitting on the floor, on the shelf for several months. Yeah, go ahead and flip it. And it had the voltage, but not the cold cranking amp. So we've been charging it for a little bit. Nathaniel's gonna try it. Oh, really? Awesome. All right, give it a shot, dude. Off for a it did? Yeah. No, I it. it didn't even try to crank over though? No. You see it keeps shutting off? Yeah, like when I turn it to the cranking position? Oh, well, you know why? Why? Because that is not switched cranking power. That's why. Because it's shutting off. Yeah. So, so now we know. So it's switched power, but it's not switched cranking. Okay. So we're gonna have to splice into the uh, steering yeah, column. Yeah. Okay, well that okay. answers our question then. Yeah, because it was shutting off immediately when I took it. Oh. Well, there we go. All right, pause, we'll be back. 12.7. Yeah, we'll see. It's okay. Like yellow at least, but. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. All right, so we got switch cranking power. Yep. I'm not rushing the truck, but we'll see if we can start without it. Here we go. Okay. Nope. Nope. Just start the truck. Okay. 
let that run for just a little bit and then we'll turn it back on and try it again. Okay. Dang it, we're so close. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Take three. Take three. Is this three now? So for tonight, yeah. <laughs> All right, ECU. How cool that is. That never gets old. No. <laughs> Hey, we're at 14.3 now. Let's look okay. at the cranking amps now, too. You ready? Yep. Here we go. Ooh, Ooh that's not. Oh, that's shutting off still. I think. Looks like it. Perfect. No, it's still on. It doesn't have the. It just doesn't have the amperage. Doesn't have the amperage. Yeah. Batteries, crap. Wow. But we got switch cranking power. We know that for now. Yeah. Well, that's frustrating. Dang it. After all this, a stinking battery is going to kill us? How timely. Ah. Blah. Uh, I don't even have... Oh, wait. Blazer's got a battery. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, if it's top post, that'll be bonus because I don't have to use those adapters. It'll fit inside the battery case. No, it's side, uh, it's side post. But it's small yeah. enough it'll fit in there, though. It's kind of... Go. You're good. Okay. Ready? Yep. Huh. Well, I'm not sure that that battery's in any better shape. Yeah. Five or six? Yes. Let's say now. 14.4, so. Okay, that's pretty good. Here we go. Oh, it stop, stop, stop. Something smoking? That's sparked, though. Not smoking, but something sparked back here pretty bad. Right on the back of the head, almost. The ground? Well, there's a little ground back there. I don't know. Do it again. I want to see it. Uh, I don't know if I want to see it. But... I want to. You cranked over that time. And I didn't spark that time. What the heck? All right, I gotta check my grounds. I don't have any. Ooh, I don't have any body grounds or engine chassis grounds on there yet on the Name engine it. itself. Okay. All right. We're a little embarrassed. But what just happened? Um, essentially, our ECU was not grounded proper properly. Well, okay. The engine wasn't properly grounded. Does that make sense? Okay, but what happened before well, we figured that out? The car ran. The car ran. And you missed it. <laughs> so we realized that we forgot to put a chassis ground to the engine block. Yes. So essentially, and I'm lucky we didn't burn up the ECU. The entire ECU was grounding itself through like one tiny little wire. Yeah, it was trying to ground the entire engine through the teeny little ECU wires. Yeah. And... Uh, Whew, we're lucky we didn't burn anything up because we forgot to put engine block chassis ground on there. So we're going to do that now. Now, the way we did it uh, to get it started was we just took um, jumper cables and then clamped it to the chassis and clamped it to the engine block. Fired right up. But we didn't have that on camera. So we didn't know what was going to happen. So you all missed it. But we're going to fix this. And then we'll come back and we'll show you guys this thing running. It wasn't running great, by the way. I think there's still some air in the fuel lines. Uh, we'll purge that and try to get that fixed and let it run a little bit, but not before we get the chassis ground. So we'll be back. All right, are you ready? I'm ready. Fire this bad boy up. Yeah, well, I got 12 volts. Don't be safe with that. Yeah, might have to crank the truck. Or not. Sounds like it's only running on four cylinders. Where's the temper? Wow. Red. I don't know what the number could be. All right, go ahead and turn it off. 
that's running like crap. All right, well, here's what happened. A lot's transpired since uh, we last filmed because we've been on the phone quite a bit with our buddy Sean and also with Holly. And what we learned is this. The part number for our injector, which is apparently very critical to the setup, to the initial setup uh, during the wizard install within uh, the handheld of the Holly Terminator X system, um, our part number is not in there. So, and you have to have the right part number. Yeah, it's very specific. Uh, you have, I mean, every part number has a particular flow, a shutoff time, a turn on time, uh, a lot of parameters for each. Well, we couldn't find ours, so we guessed with what we thought was a good uh, part number that might work as a replacement for it. Well, that's why the car is running like crap. So when I talked to Holly, they said, nope, absolutely cannot substitute a number. You have to have the right part number. I said, well, we don't. He said, well, then you have to use the software and a, a laptop and the dongle to go in and custom set it up. Well, we don't have a dongle. We don't have a software on a laptop. We do have your laptop. We could always install the software. We just got to figure out how to get the dongle to... to and find out what all those parameters are for the, the EV1 style 1255-4271 injectors yep. that we have. Because there is no cross-reference number for that. You just have to simply say, I have a 1255-4271, and then put in all the correct parameters for that particular injector through this custom setup that we can't do tonight because we don't have a dongle or the software on the laptop. So now three days away <laughs> from power tour, the car is still in pieces. The suspension is not put together, uh, but it does run. And we even verified that half the lights work. So I think what we do at this point, uh, well, the thing I forgot to tell you was that Holly said, text me in the morning. I'll, um, I'll look for solutions. Because we, I mean, it's almost 11 o'clock at night. So we, he finally just had to give it up for the night. Uh, he's going to call some of his contacts in the morning tomorrow. So hopefully he comes up with a simple answer or he overnights a dongle to us or something. Because there's nowhere around here that we can get one um, quickly or easily. So I think we just reassemble the car because we're fairly confident that 97.625% of our wiring is correct. <laughs> and uh, and then we just cross our fingers that we come up with a solution for our injector issue. So that's where we're at. Anything else? Nope. Hopefully we're not hosed. So on that note, good night. Okay, I'm back. A lot's gone on this morning. Let me try to quickly explain <clears throat> what we figured out and what our course of action is gonna be for this. I have been on the phone with everyone I know this morning. First thing since I woke up, I'll just cut to the chase and tell you what we figured out. Um, I was able to download the Holly Terminator software onto our laptop. And uh, you don't need a dongle because there's an SD card in the side of the can, the little handheld. that you can pull out, put in your laptop. Once you download that software, if your injector number is not listed, you just do a custom configuration for an injector where you have to give it the, the flow rate, um, the PSI, um, injector on time, injector off time, um, put in those parameters, save it as a custom tune, up, download it to the uh, SD card, take the SD card back to the, the can, upload it within like three clicks, reset your TPS, because every time you put a new tune in, you really need to do that, and then you should be able to fire the car up. Now, I've done that. Haven't fired the car up yet, because <clears throat> the, what, the other thing that we checked was we knew we dumped a ton of fuel in the car. Like it was, you could just smell it super rich, and it about smoked us out of the garage. So we checked the oil. Oil smells like gas, not surprisingly. 
So I'm not going to run it with washed out oil. So I'm going to give it an oil change real quick, come back, then I'm going to fire it up. I'm not going to bore you guys with an oil change. Next time you see me, we're going to fire this car up. So I'll be right back. All right. Oil's changed. Here goes nothing. Fingers crossed. <laughs> All right, figured something out. It acts like there's maybe an ejector or two that are stuck open. Um, so I'm gonna have to pull the fuel rail off, check each injector, uh, just try to individually clean each one. Um, maybe even look for a wet plug or something like that, so. Yay, it runs. Boo, it's not running well. I'll take each one of these and clean them really good and put them back on. All right, cleaned all the ejectors, just put them back. Uh, the fuel rail had a lot of gunk in it too, so just typical crappy gas that's out there. So that should be better. Um, I also noticed I had a massive vacuum leak. I forgot to plug in the vacuum line. It's just behind the throttle body here, directly into the back of the uh, Terminator. I'm sure that probably had a lot to do with uh, some of the uh, issues I had, not to mention the AFR was way off too. So that's plugged in, injectors are cleaned. Let's fire this thing back up. Hey, that's better. It's the next day. I just got off work only a couple hours early. And we got all that still to do today. I have literally only tonight and tomorrow night after work to get that done and then we gotta hit the road. So you're gonna see a lot of time lapses. <laughs> but I will say, as messy as this look, 95% of this is all hooked up. So it's just a matter of buttoning it up. I spent a fair amount of time yesterday working on the relay kit for the dual spow fans splicing that into the Terminator so that we had uh, individual controls for each fans. Uh, I'm by myself at the moment. Nathaniel won't be here until a little later. Um, I got to try to get the slip joint for the steering column slid in while this thing is still hanging here by itself. It'd be great to have one person at each end of it, but I'm going to try to get that on my own and then get this thing up and then start buttoning all this up and get the dash reinstalled. So here we go. Making some progress. I got the main part of the dash in. Before I put it in, I had to plaster weld this section right here. It looks kind of messy because that's from past attempts uh, where it broke, but I just couldn't let it go. It was hanging here, and that's what was partly actually I hadn't even tightened that yet. That's what used to let that hang so it didn't drop. But now it's actually fused on there, so it's tight. Um, so here's all the gauge wires. Um, this is not ideal. I'd really like to just grab a, like a Deutsch connector or something like that. Uh, so I can just unplug a single connector down to all my gauges over here. But for now, this is what I've got. I'm still working on, um, identifying which ones are which. I'm not going to use them all, but, um, but I'll have enough of them that we should be able to function. Uh, here's some accessory stuff that I'll probably end up coiling back up and working on later. The only thing that I know I'm definitely going to need for the trip is the orange one for the cigarette lighter so we can charge our phones. The rest of it's accessories. That yellow wire might be for the wipers. I'll check that out later. It was an optional thing. Here's typical radio wires. Uh, and then obviously I got some stuff to clean up here. And then the Terminator will mount right there without wires hanging in front of it. Hey, it's been a while since we've given you guys an update, but as you can see, 
we're making some significant progress here. And Nathaniel is now working on the most important wiring in the whole car. What is that? Radio. The radio, exactly. It's very important. Yeah. So he's, <laughs> so he's like, well, what wires do I hook up? I'm like, well, read the side of them. Let's get our book out here. We'll figure it out. And we'll get the most important component to this car installed. Yes. And we'll be back with you in a little bit. All right. It's time. 3 a.m. It's 3 a.m. It's time to fire this bad boy up and take him for a drive. Fire it up, buddy. <laughs> you like playing with that, don't you? Looking at it for now. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> 